All right, guys, welcome to History Saver 1941. And good morning. If I sound a little raspy, that's because I have a horrible sinus infection. Yeah, so if I get a coughing fit in the middle of this, you're just going to have to excuse it, I hope. Um, so, yeah, just please excuse it if I do go into a coughing fit or, you know, all that stuff that comes with a sinus infection. Which is, uh, yeah, it's been kicking my butt the last few days. Like, seriously. Um, I'm still feeling like crud. I didn't even really want to do a live stream today, but I owe it to you guys because I missed one last week. And there we go. Um, hopefully everything is going um, going to go good with it because I still feel like absolute poop. Uh, but it is what it is. So, again, if I go into a coffin fit in the middle of this, just excuse it. Fighting the severe sinus infection, I guess, has come with all the traveling I've been doing. Going from one place to the other. And just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's part of the game, I guess. So, this is a special live stream this morning. I am going to give it a minute and let people jump in here before we get to the meat and potatoes here. But, uh... First off, I want to start this by saying thank you all of you guys for all of the support. Uh, Mil Sup Duro, hey brother, uh, History Saver 1941, what's up Mil Sup? Um, so yeah, it, it's been crazy, um, and I got to thank you guys for all the support. I mean, it, the channel has been growing at a rapid pace, so for all of you guys that's been sharing the channel with your friends and spreading the word, I can't thank you enough. I, I hope you... You like what's going on? Skippy, 62 Abel, what's up, buddy? Um, that's LA Beast for you guys that don't know. One of my favorite YouTubers, actually. Uh, have a good day. What's up, man? I am, dude, I'm so happy. I'm stoked that you're on here. Um, pretty cool. I've, I probably need to send you some military rations, too, by the way. Um, if you haven't checked out LA Beast, you got to go check out his channel. Awesome channel. One of my favorites. He does some uh, really cool Sometimes weird stuff, but really cool um, stuff on his channel. He's one of my absolute favorite channels to watch. He's he's done some really cool, entertaining stuff on that channel. If you haven't checked him out, you're really missing out. Uh, History rules. It sure does, man. Um, L.A. Beast, actually, for you guys, a lot of you guys probably do watch L.A. Beast. He's one of the more popular YouTubers on here, way up here more than I am. Uh, but he was actually a history major. So, pretty cool. He does a lot. He's had a lot of cool metal detecting videos, actually, on his channel as well, which I really enjoy. Um, so, yeah, if you're ever down towards this way, man, in South Alabama, you, you got an invitation. I'll take you out metal detecting. Um, I don't do it as much anymore. But, yeah, we'll, we'll do some metal detecting and some magnet fishing. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Um, Rowan Snell, I absolutely love your vids. It's a mystery. People don't know about your channel. You know... I, I do, I do not do this channel for the views. I, I do this channel because I absolutely love um, love history. And I love teaching history to others. You know, history is my number one passion um, outside of my film production stuff that I normally do for my everyday stuff uh, job, I guess you could say. Um, and, you know, that's what I want to do in my film career. So it's, uh, it's, it's what I want to do. So that's uh, – that's, that's the whole basis behind this channel. I started this channel for fun a lot of years ago. I started off doing MRE reviews because it was something I was interested in. And, uh, you know, people people liked it. And I, I said, well, I really want this channel to go in the direction of going to historic sites, teaching people about history, bringing them into my world of also historical reenacting. So, that's the direction I took with it. And then, of course, you know, J.D. from the History Underground, James from Project Past, and uh, then you've got Chris from Vlogging Through History. You know, those were my favorite channels to watch. And then me and J.D. Uh, ended up getting together, doing some stuff together. And then um, me and James from Project Past has been able to connect. And it's it's been an absolute ride. And um, you like my hat? Yeah, it's my Columbia hat. This thing has seen more than this fair share of uh, of sweat. I, I will tell you that right now. Uh, actually, I need to get a new one. I've washed this hat till it can't be washed anymore. I think. Uh, keep on keeping on. I will, man. I, I will keep on keeping on. You do the same. 
Uh, love love your content, brother. Uh, Dustin, good morning, Josh. Dustin, another good friend of the channel. We met up with him. Um, he's with Project uh, Pass, James from Project Pass over in Gettysburg. If you guys haven't checked out Project Pass, you're really missing out. Um, James is doing some excellent content. And we'll get to that in a minute as well. <coughs> Here comes the cough. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute as well. Um, there's some things I want to talk about with concerning James the Project Past and the history underground. Um, but yeah, that was the basis behind this channel, like I said just a minute ago, is I do this because I love history. I love sharing it with you guys. And I'm, I'm just stoked that someone out there wants to watch it. So, you know, I do, I, I tend to ramble a lot and it's something I've been trying to get away from a little bit. But, you know, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you do research. I do research behind everywhere I go. I'm just going to get ready to head upstate New York. I'm reading a book right now called Bloody Mohawk in preparation for that, talking about the French and Indian War in upstate New York, also talking about the American Revolutionary War in upstate New York, and I'm getting ready to go to some really cool fortifications. I don't want to give it away because you guys are going to be seeing that on the channel. Um, so I don't want to give it away yet, and I don't want to promise you anything that may that may or may not happen because you never know what the weather is going to do. Um, but we have some cool fortifications that we're going to, and I'm having I, everywhere I go, I prepare by doing a lot of research, a lot of reading. You know, I, I know a little bit about what I'm getting myself into going in, but I don't know everything and I never will know everything. I mean, that is the glory behind doing a history channel is the research to me. That is the most fun part of doing this is being able to research the places I'm going to and learn from you guys, learn from what I'm reading, learn from different avenues. And that's, uh, that's, it's pretty cool to be able to do that when I'm going to places. But when you research these places and you actually step foot there, I have learned that a lot of stuff you're reading and researching kind of goes out the window because you never get a feel for the lay of the land until you put your feet on the lay of the land itself. And that's one of the things that Gettysburg will teach you. If you've never visited Gettysburg, you can read, you can study the Battle of Gettysburg all you want. But if you've never actually been to Gettysburg, the minute you put your boots on the ground in Gettysburg, everything you've read and researched kind of goes out the window. And you start to see Gettysburg from the perspective of the soldiers that fought at Gettysburg. Because you're actually able to see the lay of the land, see the rolling hills, and see the ridges that they talk about. So that's that's one of the cool aspects of doing this and traveling to these different places is everything you learn and research goes out the window once you set foot there because you're actually getting the perspective of these soldiers, men and women, that stepped on these sites for themselves so many years ago. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to have that experience. Uh, speaking of weather, I was supposed to have a World War II reenactment this weekend, but with three inches of rain, holy cow, forecasted we decided to not attend, don't want to, yeah, you don't want to be floating away, um, definitely, three inches of rain, man, that's a lot, that is a lot, uh, Paul's here, uh, good morning, uh, Josh, good morning, Paul, um, Paul, actually, man, we had such a blast together in Gettysburg, um, Paul met up with us in Gettysburg, gave us some cool presents. Um, it, it was it was a very exciting time in Gettysburg, and I'm still I'm still coming off the coattails of Gettysburg, even though that was in July. You know, Gettysburg, yeah, it, it's still it's still been exciting for the aftermath of Gettysburg. Uh, but yeah, dude, you do not want to go to a reenactment where three inches of rain is forecasted. That's one of the things. If you guys are reenactors are interested in getting into reenacting. I know a lot of people that watch the channel watch the channel for some of that reenacting geared uh, content that I do. Um, yeah, that's one of the things you're going to learn is really watch the weather because this stuff isn't cheap. And when it gets wet, you have a lot of problems. So if there's rain forecasted for an event that's like that, three inches of rain, I'm not going either. Uh, Paul just got back from Gettysburg uh, World War II weekend. I heard that was an absolute uh, blast. So, yeah, Gettysburg is more history, guys, than just Civil War. There's a lot of World War II history that went on in Gettysburg. Also, some World War I history. And some POW history with German POWs as well. So, it's, it's a cool aspect for you to, um, I challenge you to go kind of research and check out, <coughs> excuse me, Gettysburg for the uh, World War II history as well. There was a, 
some really cool training training grounds at Gettysburg. Um, and they have some really cool World War II events at Gettysburg as well that you really probably want to check out at some point. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't expecting this many people to pop in for the live this morning, which is absolute crazy. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to do in this live stream is I, I want to talk about what's coming up on the channel. So I have been doing some new stuff, uh, new developments for different content to come on the channel other than just World War II reenacting stuff and history travel stuff. You know, I want to give you guys kind of a mixture of content here. And one of the things I have decided to do, and I've been working on this, is setting up a space in my studio uh, slash war room office uh, to be able to do some re uh, reaction videos for different YouTube channels and videos and content. Yeah, people seem like they enjoy that. And I've been asked time and time again to do this and to maybe give my views on some of this, uh, maybe some videos of some World War II reenactments, you know, things that was good with it, things that went good with it, things I wouldn't do or would do. And then some also, also like give my reactions to some other content creators, people like JD and people like Project Past. And speaking of, uh, JD's has some really cool content coming up uh, concerning Buffalo Bill that's been popping up on his channel. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, and you guys really need to go check out those videos because it, it's, it's, it's really neat to see that aspect that you don't see a lot of historical places in that history. Also, James for Project Pass. Now, I did go to Antietam. I have not aired, aired the episodes yet from Antietam. Um, but I did go to Antietam and film a little bit. James's video he just posted from Antietam is absolutely beyond measure of what a great YouTube history video is. That was an awesome episode. One of my favorite episodes I think James has ever ran on his channel was the one that he ran this past week from Antietam. And if you haven't checked it out, you are truly, truly missing out. And that is kind of where I'm going to start my review of some YouTube content here in this live stream of other different YouTube content uh, creators is James from Project Past. So his last video uh, was at Antietam. And he went in, he went into the, uh, to the cornfield area and there was a really cool artillery battery there. And he went into the actual stories of some of these soldiers who fought at Antietam in that particular area. And it was absolutely amazing. These stories are absolutely amazing to see three different stories from three different guys and their view of the battle of Antietam and what they did there. It was pretty neat. It was pretty neat to watch, and I highly suggest you going back and watching that video. Um, all of James's content from his channel is absolutely amazing, but that last episode, I don't know what it was about that last episode. Um, his Gettysburg content was absolutely extraordinary, but that last episode that he shot for Mantino was, I don't know, it just it tugged on our heartstrings a little bit. And it, it was just unbelievably awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, please go do so. Um, let's see. Uh, Saturday, we had a great weather with over 40 units, but Sunday we got rained out. Mm, that's, that's bad, man. I hate it when it happens. Uh, we have done a reenactment where it almost rained a flint that came out of nowhere. That was five years ago. And I'm still fighting mud in places from that show. Yeah, I've had some, a few events like that too, Mill Serp Duro, where it, it's just been, it wasn't supposed to rain, and then all of a sudden it come back and it just absolutely downpoured. Uh, James, dude, you did not have to do that. You're too kind. Glad to hear you enjoyed it. Thanks for all the support. Dude, thank you so much. You didn't have to do that. Um, yeah, another thing, if you guys haven't joined Project Pass's Patreon page, you're missing out on that, too. I'm, I'm a member of his po um, Patreon page. You get a very neat newsletter, very neat behind-the-scenes content, and it's worth every cent that you, you support his channel to. And it helps him, like all other history creators, where, you know, they have those Patreon pages and different avenues. It helps them to be able to go out and do more of this stuff. Um, the equipment isn't cheap, man. It isn't cheap. It, it is not cheap, and it's not cheap getting these places for hotel rooms and different things. So, yeah, I mean, everything you can help out helps with 
you know, content creators like James that has that Patreon account and you get something back and the newsletter he puts out every month, man, I look forward to it every month. It's so, it's, it's so, it, it's such a highlight of my mind to be able to read that thing. You know, I read so much as it is and that's one of my favorite things I look forward to reading every month. Um, let's see. So last Friday, we did a first day tour with Aaron. He did a great job. We also did Antietam on Monday at Be uh, Beautiful Battlefield. Dude, Antietam is absolutely beautiful. And uh, Dogface uh, Paul here is referring to Aaron. Now, Aaron is from Ford Gettysburg. He also has a channel here on YouTube. And he does some of them. Some more absolutely just astounding content from Gettysburg. Go check out Forward Gettysburg here on YouTube. Aaron does some really cool stuff there. Uh, thank you, James, so much. You didn't have to do that, man. Um, and thank you for all the support. You don't have to thank me, man. I mean, it, I, I'm a big, big fan of your channel, and you're one of my really good buddies. And not only that, I'm a huge fan of your channel. So uh, I'm more than happy to support you any way I can. But that Antietam episode, dude, was above and beyond great. I mean, that was absolutely just fantastic. I do not even want to post my Antietam episode now, okay? Because I had maybe two hours of Antietam. I didn't have time to go into things in depth. I just kind of show you around the battlefield a little bit, get into a little bit of the stories, uh, but not a whole lot. I just more or less in these episodes from Antietam want to show you Antietam if you've never been there. And Dude, after watching his episodes from Antietam, I'm just like, I don't even want to post mine. Like, there's there's no job I could ever do that's going to even compare to James's uh, Project Passes episode here from Antietam. It's absolutely just awesome. So, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a cool experience. I've watched that video now. He posted it on Sunday, and I've watched it four or five times now. Um, so that's how good it was. I've watched that episode four or five times already. Um, JD from History Underground has got some really cool stuff coming up. And speaking of, um, there is a book called The Rifle. If you haven't checked it out, it's by Andrew uh, Biggio. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't butcher his name. But it's called the, it's a book by Andrew Biggio called The Rifle. And it's highlighting stories of World War II veterans. And what Andrew did was he and what he's doing is going around to these different veterans. And he is compiling their stories from World War II, and he's getting them to sign this rifle, and it's absolutely just cool. It's one of the things I dreamed of doing, and he's also a military veteran himself of Iraq, Afghanistan, and he's just such a cool guy, and he, he put all of these stories into a book called The Rifle, and today, I believe it is today, if it wasn't yesterday, The Rifle 2 Part two of the rifle has come out. I've got mine already ordered. It's on the way here. I can't wait to get it in my hands because I read the first one and it's absolutely fantastic. And I can't wait to read the rifle too. Um, so make sure you pick up a copy of the rifle too. It goes to support a very good cause with Andrew and helps him to gather as many of these stories from these veterans as possible before they pass away. And JD from the History on the Ground has been doing a lot with Andrew. And it, it's such a cool experience to see those two guys working together. Uh, let's let's catch up on the comments here. Uh, good morning uh, from Squirrels Magnet Fishing and Outdoors. There's another awesome uh, YouTube channel I have watched before. I'm a big fan of camping, vid, uh, camping channels. <coughs> the Outdoor Boys. Um, camping with Steve. Uh, Mav. Uh, fishing more um that, that's some of my favorite channels uh corporal's corner you know i love these camping videos and then oh uh, field days the australian guy field days another one of my favorite channels i love these camping channels these survival channels as well so i do have some likes outside of history uh but they still kind of correspond with history a little bit but that's some of the things i like watching on youtube myself in my spare time um but uh yeah he's got an absolute Great, great channel, too. There's a lot of magnet fishing and different things. So go check out his channel as well. Good morning. Um, we watched his last video, then got on the battlefield and had a brain fart. And didn't find uh, the unit he covered. But we walked in the bloody lane and Burnside Bridge. Actually, I was in that exact same spot, Paul, uh, Dogface, where um, I filmed in the exact same spot where James for Project Pass was on the battlefield at Antietam. And it's right there 
along the cornfield and he west woods and it's just right down the road from ducker church and it's an absolute amazing spot where some of the original photographs from the Battle of Antietam were taken by Alexander Gardner after the battle. Alexander Gardner became famous after these Antietam photographs, and then he became more famous before uh, because of his photographs he took at Gettysburg. So I love studying those Civil War photographs, and Alexander Gardner is by far one of the best Civil War battlefield photographers that there was, besides Matthew Brady, and I love studying his photographs. So I did visit that spot, but I didn't know the stories James knew walking in in there. And so I found it as that same spot too, but I didn't do anything that he did, which is cool. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I wish I would have known some of this information because it's just so, so cool information to know about a 15 year old kid who is fighting in this position and he's manning cannons by himself. Could you imagine 15 years old? Being a kid at 15 years old, I was, dude, I was playing outside, okay? I wasn't worried about, I was worried about getting my learner's permit to drive, not worried about going into combat. And this dude is manning cannons at 15 years old, fighting back the Confederate Army. I mean, what an amazing, amazing story. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what I do, too, when I go in these places, is I get a brain fart. Uh, let's see. He was at Ike's Farm during a book signing, but we missed him. Uh, but Matt did an interview with me. Yeah, Matt from uh, Gettys uh, Dressing Gettysburg. Guys, if you haven't checked out the Dressing Gettysburg podcast, you need to go do that. Awesome, awesome sponsor of the channel here. And also, one of my favorite podcasts to listen to has been for years. And he did an awesome interview with um, Andrew uh, Vigio from the author of the book, the rifle and rifle too and it was just premiered i think this last week on his channel um you can check out address and get his work here on youtube also anywhere you stream your podcast and he done an awesome video with him it's really worth checking out andrew was in gettysburg i hate that you missed him because i was actually tempted to send you a text and say hey um let me let me send you some money and get you an autograph get me an autograph copy uh from him but um I'll, I'll get it from him personally some other time uh, I found another place for you to go when you come out to uh, Kansas City area, the Ike Presidential Museum, about two hours from my place. Would love to do that. I do have plans to come to Kansas City at some point within the next year or two. So Kansas City will be here on the channel. I'm also planning to go to Missouri at some point. Um, it, there's some places in Missouri I want to go visit. I don't want to give it away yet, but it's got some colonial history to it. And it, 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 it's the way I found out about this place in Missouri is through another favorite YouTube channel of mine called Early American and Frontier Days. Um, if you guys haven't go checked it out, go check it out. Uh, awesome channel. If you're into colonial history, they do a lot of cooking stuff, a lot of other really interesting content. Uh, but they're in St. Genevieve, Missouri, a um, place I've never heard about until I started watching their channel. And I really now want to go check out the place for myself and maybe meet up with them and do a, um, do a collab here for the channel at some point in the future. So um, hopefully we'll be able to do that. Um, did meet up with Matt and gave me some more beer. Yeah, Dogface uh, Paul, when we was in Gettysburg, was giving away Curry Heat beer. Uh, now, I don't drink, but I did I did take some, and I've been passing out the buddies, and they all say it's really good. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't checked out Curry Heat beer, I'm not for sure where to order it from, but you can, um, of course, Google it, find out where it's at. And order it. So if you're into beer, yeah, hey, it's, it goes to support veterans too. So it's it's a it's a pretty cool beer in my book, even though I don't drink. But I've been passing them out to the buddies, and they seem to like them. Um, actually, one of them's been begging me to get some more. Um, so yeah, um, it obviously it's pretty good. Um, yeah, Paul actually when we was in Gettysburg bought out Vat 69. Chris from Vlogger Through History. Uh, partook Gary Edelman partook uh, JD I think it's kind of like me and don't really drink so he didn't partake in it uh, but uh, I think James partook in it but it, it you know it's cool to see a bottle of that 69 you watch the uh, band of brothers and it just makes it famous and it, it actually exists people I mean this it's actually a real thing I uh, love St. Uh, Genevieve, Missouri. Amazing place to visit and beautiful country there. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really wanting to visit St. Genevieve, Missouri. Uh, film some content there. Maybe hook up with Early American. Um, 
really cool YouTube channel. And they also have, I think it's Frontier Days, if I'm not mistaken. It could be something else, but that channel is also connected to Early American. Go check out their YouTube channel. It's an awesome YouTube channel, one of my favorites to watch. And hopefully we'll be able to hook up with them in the future for a collab when I go there. So that's the hope anyway. So um, maybe maybe I'll get a response from them when we can do that. Um, and we're going to come visit Kansas City. Check out, uh, there's a Cold War One Museum up that way I want to check out too. Uh, there's a lot of stuff up there. I want to, of course, check out the St. Louis Arch and different things. I've never been to St. Louis. Um, one of my one of my buddies, actually, uh, or a mutual friend, played hockey in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm not going to call any names, but he played for the Blues. Um, so I really do want to go check it out. Um, Gettysburg is on one of my is one of my favorite places to visit. So you wanted to visit Gettysburg, squirrel, um, magnet fishing, and outdoors. Yeah, yeah. I, I, if you haven't been to Gettysburg, man, you got to go. Definitely got to go. Uh, let's see. Dustin Wilson's Creek in, in Missouri is a great battlefield to visit. Um, I've never been to Wilson's Creek. Uh, Dustin was just at Wilson's Creek. He sent me some photos from Wilson's Creek. I definitely want to go. It's on my bucket list, and I'm definitely going. Uh, Dustin may have to get you to come with me. Uh, Easy Company Beer, I think you can order it online. There you go. It's called Easy Company Beer, um, and you can order it online. Google it, people. Order you some Easy Company Beer. It, all my buddies say it's awesome. Um, I can't say it for myself because I haven't tried it, but if Paul can vouch for it, I can vouch for it. Um, I need to order some beer named after a friend called Airborne Beer. Rest in peace, Vince. Vince Ferraza, yes. Um, I have actually been wanting to order that as well, even though I don't drink. But you can Google it. It is called Airborne Beer. You can order it directly from France. But the here, here's the story behind Airborne Beer. Vince Ferraza, of course, is a famous World War II veteran. And he is famed with actually feeding his injured buddies in the hospital beer out of his helmet. So the story goes that he's going to visit his, his buddy, Joe toy, who is in a hospital in Bath stone and he's injured and he goes to visit him. And Joe tells us, Vince, I want some beer. So Vince follows the streets after Joe says, you're going to find me beer. And he comes upon a bar Well, the bar has been bombed out. Excuse me. The sinus is bothering me. But uh, the bar's been bombed out. He comes upon a bar where the counter is still actually intact. And the drafts are still actually intact. He pulls one, and it works. So he starts filling his helmet full of beer, takes it back to Joe, gives him some beer. All the rest of the guys like, go get some more. Come back, come back. There's bombs still falling all around this place. And as he goes back, gets the beer, a bomb falls. He spills most of the beer out of his helmet. But he... Now, that airborne beer is a beer that was created from Vince Raza's story without him even knowing. And <clears throat> it is customary to serve the beer in a little upside-down ceramic, uh, ceramic helmet. And you can actually order this online. And if you go to France, you can actually buy it for yourself, too. But you can actually order this online. And I, I do want to order some of that just to put on, you know, in the war room up on the shelf somewhere. Um, in memory of Vince, because it's a really cool piece of history. I traded more beer and got another bottle of Vat 69 from the Etso, the 508. Well, I, so that's awesome, dude. That is awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Easy Company Beer, you know, Google it, check it out, and uh, pick you up some. But, um, it, yeah, he, he, he showed up at Gettysburg, gave us all some of this stuff, and all of my buddies seem to like it so it's uh i gave it some reenacting buddies they all love it and they want some more so i'll uh i'll have to forward them the information on how to get it um but yeah guys there's a lot coming up on the channel american revolutionary war content i know you're looking out for that the last video i posted was from new market it's probably saying what in the world is going on well i've been fighting a sinus infection i've been on travel i've been sick at the same time and it's been really hard to push out some of the American Revolutionary War episodes in doing that because there's a lot of editing that's going behind those episodes. So I went ahead and I pushed out New Market to give you kind of a breath of fresh air between the American Revolutionary War content. Just kind of mixed it up a little bit. Um, so we do have some American Revolutionary War content coming. There's a lot of editing with these because these are taking a different approach than what I normally take in editing my videos because I want them to turn out pretty good um actually the next video that's coming out in that series 
is a little different than what I normally put out anyway because it's more of a vlog format. And let me explain the backstory of this. So this video and episode that will be coming out next is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it is from the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall. And it was on July the 5th when I visited. So there was a lot of people there in Philadelphia visiting these sites on July the 5th. I didn't take that into account before I went. I was just excited I was able to go. So it was absolute mayhem trying to fight my way through these people to film a YouTube video. And so anyways... I have kind of filmed this video and this episode in a vlog style format. It was really hard to do anything other than that because I couldn't get the B-roll I wanted because there's so many people there. So I had to import the B-roll and get the B-roll in the situations where I could get it. And there was just a, there was a ton of people. So I couldn't actually relay a lot of the information I wanted to. So it's more or less of a vlog format style of vlog style video that is coming from Philadelphia, uh, from Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell. So, and then the next episode after that from the American Revolutionary War series uh, will be from Savannah, Georgia. And that's where things will be kind of going in a little bit of a more professional um, documentary style direction. Because I wanted, I want to do a very good job on this series because it's something that not a lot of people have highlighted. And I, I, ha, I found a lot of interesting information while I was researching um, the American Revolutionary War in Savannah, in particular Savannah, because there's some places that you pass right by in Savannah as a tourist, and you won't even realize what it is. But it's actually one of the most historic places in all of Savannah. And people have just seemed to lose it to history. So there, there's cool places like this spread out through Savannah, and Savannah's American Revolutionary War battlefield is all but lost, other than the Spring Hill Redoubt, which is the only section really preserved. Hmm. Of course, there's monuments, excuse me, um, of course, there's monuments and different placards all through Savannah with Florida's as well. But as far as the original battlefield, everything is pretty much built up on the in industrial mindset now and commercial mindset. And there's not much of the original battlefield actually left. So it, it's going to be a very cool series. And then we go into Charleston, South Carolina, which is just very cool in itself as well. And there's a lot of cool stuff from Charleston you'll be seeing, uh, including a plantation and some other things uh, concerning the American Revolutionary War uh, time period in Charleston and the siege of Charleston. So I'm really excited about that series. And of course, Somewhere in the mansion, we're going to be throwing in um, Antietam. And then some also of, um, we're also going to be throwing in some of these little, li um, not live streams, but some of these reviews that you're going to be seeing as well. I'm going to start incorporating those in as well to kind of give you a mixture. It's something different to watch and, you know, some more in enjoyment and mm -hmm. entertainment. So I want to start throwing these in too, in between some of these to kind of, you know, keep you entertained and maybe even start doing two videos a week instead of one. If I can get the time to do all of the editing. I mean, a lot of people don't realize doing YouTube and doing these videos, it's not just going out and filming. It's not traveling these places, filming these places. That's the fun part to me. The, the not so fun part is where you got to come home and compile all this footage and put it together. The editing takes the longest. It, it is fun doing it, uh, doing it. I enjoy doing it, but it gets tedious and it's very long hours doing this stuff. And there's a ton of work that goes into it. Um, so it takes a little while to edit the episodes. That way they're up to par to show them to you guys. Because, you know, I don't want to look like an idiot in front of guys like my favorite YouTubers like Project Past and JD from the History Underground and Chris from Vlogging Through History and Ford Gettysburg and Addressing Gettysburg. And then, you know, I've got all these guys that want me to produce really good content that's supporting the channel here. Um, and, you know, I, I want to do a good job and make them look good as well. So, you know, it's, um, I enjoy doing it. But, you know, there is that, sense that you have to do it right as well and not just rush things because you know this is i want to i want to give you guys high quality content 
and that's that's my goal here. Uh, let's get back to some of these. Um, yeah, let's catch up on comments. We toast events and all of the Easy Company Troopers while at Ike's Farm, uh, per the tradition of the Easy Company 506. We also did this during the Prop Blast Bash in the Barracks. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome, Paul. Uh, Mel Subduro, I have known Vince my whole life. Really? He was like a grandfather to me. I have been in his house multiple times. I was unable to attend his services, but I will always love him. Um, man, that's awesome, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, I've got a World War II veteran who's still alive. He's 100, fits in the turn 100 to 1 next month. Um, we're going to have to do something special for him here on the channel. Yeah. I think we've got. I think we've got to do that. Um, but he was a first lieutenant during World War II. He was at the Battle of the Bulge, served in Patton's division, and he has some very, just, astounding stories from World War II. Um, some of his stories are just absolutely amazing, and he's still with us. He turns 101 next month, still in his right mind, doing good health wise. To be 101, this guy is also a historian, believe it or not. And he is just an awesome individual. He's like my grandfather. I've known him most of my life, uh, like you've known Vince. And, you know, when you lose these guys, you're losing more than just a grandfather figure, but you're losing a part of yourself in a huge role model. I mean, these are the guys that have driven me to get into history. These are the guys who had driven me to get into reenacting. They are the reason why this channel exists in the first place. And it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm constantly seeing World War II veterans passing away every day that I've met. And it, there's no words for it. I mean, it, it definitely pulls on your heartstrings a lot because these guys are more than just grandfather figures are their role models and yeah um yeah losing vince you know i never met vince but i've read all of his stories i've read his book nuts um i i've actually got a copy of his book uh nuts i've got two copies of it and it's a great book and when you're we're losing these guys at, the, at a rapid rate in five years' time, there will be no World War II veterans left. That's hard to grasp your head around. So, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely it, it's close to home. Um, I grew up in a hobby with Wild Bill and Babe. That's awesome. Always challenging me to out-drink them. Well, they could have got me because I don't drink. But uh, that's awesome. I, could you imagine hearing the stories from those guys personally? <sighs> I'll agree. Vince always pushed history for me and also got me into reenacting as well. That's cool. I can't waste to uh, wait to toast another beer with him in heaven someday. Sorry, I got to wet, wet the throat here um, with some Black Rifle coffee. Uh, that's what's in here, too. Um, that's awesome. You know, Vince, I, I've watched all of his videos of his stories. <clears throat> another thing I want to I want to tell you guys about is uh, concerning this. Um Sydney Phillips, who is portrayed in the series The Pacific, um, Sydney Phillips was from Mobile, Alabama, Dolphin Island, Alabama, um, and it's really close to where I live now. Um, he was a doctor here, a local doctor, really popular, really well known, not because of being a World War II veteran, because he's really good at being a doctor. He was an awesome doctor, but you know, he was asked one time. What did you think about the Pacific series? He hated it because it didn't portray them right. But, you know, he said there were some things about it that he loved, some things that, about it that just wasn't correct. And that's what you got to keep in mind that when you're watching these series like the Pacific and Band of Brothers, how, and, you know, me working in film production, that's one of the things that does happen for entertainment purposes and to keep the audience entertained is there is always some kind of Hollywood over dramatized scene going on somewhere that's not necessarily correct. But I will say the Band of Brothers in the Pacific are pretty correct. They're up there with Saving Private Ryan and some of the things. You're always going to find fault. You're always going to find things that's not portrayed correctly and not done right. 
but it didn't really that didn't really the purpose the purpose is to get people interested in their stories and in what they did to get them the recognition they deserve and those and i, I told city this um uh, before he passed and i said to me that's the reason why it was such a success and it you know after taking a moment it, you're right it did because i mean look at it now the band of brothers the pacific has got so many people interested in world war ii i talk to people all the time in reenacting they started world war ii reenacting and got into world war ii history because of the pacific and band of brothers so regardless of what was correct in the film what was not correct in the film should it all have been done correctly in my opinion yes it should have but at the same time, it did its job. It got people interested in World War II, and that is one of the biggest, biggest things. Um, it took a few years, but Bill sat me down and shared how he truly earned his nickname over a few beers. I would love to hear that story. Uh, we had that happen with Easy Company Vets after Air talking about them, uh, talking with them about it was a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, I would love to know how well Bill Garnier actually got that nickname. Um, that, that would be cool. That would be cool to hear that story of how he actually, because I know the series portrays it of, uh, oh, hold on. Okay. Uh, truck cut off here. I got to keep the AC on, but uh, I'm going to stay here too long. But the series Band of Brothers, you know, in one part of it, if you think back, if you've seen the series, it's got Wild Bear Garnier mowing down some German soldiers, and apparently that's how he got his name. That's because he was killing so many German soldiers on D-Day. And I don't know what the true story is of how he got his nickname, so that'd be cool to uh, to to know about. Um, that's what is getting that that's what is getting my generation into it. Uh, being mid twenties, yeah. Um, Paul says of what they got right and wrong, yeah. It, it, it's. If you talk with these veterans about that kind of stuff, it's a roller coaster ride. But the problem is, a lot of veterans won't even talk about it. I mean, they won't watch it. Um, I asked this friend of mine, who's like a grandfather to me, I've known him my whole life. He was a first lieutenant, like I said. I asked him, Have you seen these series? And he said, No, and I will not watch the series. It, it's hard enough for him to talk about his World War II past. I've tried to get him to do oral, an oral story on camera here for the channel. And he simply, he, he's a historian and an author, and he simply told me this. Here's a copy of my book. He said, I, I won't sit here and tell you everything on camera. And he tells me stories all the time about World War II, but he won't do it on camera. And if I want to know in a detail about things, he hands me a copy of his book. And maybe, I, I really haven't figured out how to incorporate his story here yet. Um, and I want to. But with him just handing me a copy of a book, I'm kind of like, Ugh. I don't know how to incorporate that into YouTube, but, you know, it is uh, it's something I got to figure out. Maybe I could eventually talk him into it. Um, it's not in the book or series as never trusted. Okay. So the real story of how Wild Bill Garnier got his name is not in the book or the series. Hmm. Now you piqued my interest. You're just going to leave me hanging. Man, since now I'm, I'm really interested. So we may have to have a conversation outside of this live stream if it's not something you want everybody to know about. Um, because I would love to hear that. Uh, that would be an awesome story to know. Um, excuse me, guys. Like I said, the sinus effects is driving me nuts today. But, uh, yeah, I mean, these stories of these guys, we're losing these guys every day. In five years' time, at the most, there will not be any guys left. I mean, even... The youngest World War II veterans right now are, what, 98, probably at the at the least. Uh, we are planning a trip to France next year during the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Also might have to make the drive over to Belgium and Bastogne area. 80 years, man. Can you? Wow. That's hard to believe. I mean, you do the math here. 80 years. I still remember the 60th anniversary. And I was a kid, but 80 years, that's a long time, bro. And these guys are still kicking. 
five years time, there will not be any on the 85th anniversary. You will have, if any, very little World War II veterans left. Um, hopefully I can make it over there for the 80th anniversary. It's kind of a long story, but he was honest about him doing a lot of killing that day. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I bet it's an awesome story. Um, and could you imagine just being a farm boy coming from a small town? All of a sudden you're in the middle of France on D-Day dropping from a freaking airplane into the middle of combat and mowing down German soldiers. You know, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I have thought about this time and time and time again. How would I, could I do it? Could I actually take someone's life? If I'm in the military, in a war zone, could I actually kill someone? I say yes. But when you're in that situation, I don't know. Do I want to take someone's life? No. No, I, I just don't have that in me. But if I'm getting shot at in a war zone, I mean, you have no other choice. It's either be killed or kill. So I don't know. I don't know. And that's, that's, that's kind of, it's interesting to think about. And I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on that because you do it. If you, a lot of you may have been in that situation, uh, God forbid, but if you have it, could you do it? Um, I might even try to get jump training by then and jump in. That would be cool. I have, I have gotten invitations to do that, but I, I'm not, I can't jump out of an airplane, man. I'm, I'm even scared of heights. You know, I love flying. I absolutely love flying for some reason. Flying does not scare me. I hate heights, but I, you know, I will cock, I will conquer heights, but I'm not jumping out of an airplane. No. Uh, Mill syrup. They have a set number of jumps you need to have. I think it's 35. Also, the rec for it closes soon. I think. I think those guys are out of Ohio, so you can actually, for you guys that are interested, you can actually look it up. There's a group. I think they're out of Ohio. That does uh, recreations of the 101st Airborne jumps, and you can go do it. You can pay and get enrolled and take a course, and you can jump. <coughs> Would I want to do it? No, I'm not doing it, but, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that will do it. Actually, my cousin was a professional skydiver. He has taught, tried to talk me into jumping out of airplanes time and time again, and he's made over 3,000 jumps himself, and I... I'm just like, no, bro. He has broken his back, broken both arms, broken both legs. Why would I want to jump out of an airplane? You know, you've broken your back, both arms, broke both legs. And you're trying to convince me to jump out of an airplane. Not happening. Not happening. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, that's, that's the honest to God truth. I have done two jumps, but a long way for 35. So that is out of the question now. <laughs> Dude, I'm not jumping out of an airplane. Uh, you can jump for me and you both. How about that? So, hey, strap on a GoPro, though. That would be that'd be some awesome footage. But, uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not going with you. Sorry. Yeah, I have a few buddies on ADT that have made a jump, uh, last jump over there. That would be awesome. It would be an awesome experience. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you just can't convince me to jump off the airplane. Now, if you told me you've never jumped before, I'll strap you to someone. We would go to France and, well, throw you up an airplane, strap to someone, just so you could say you made a jump over France. I would probably wet myself, but I may actually do that. But that would be the only time you get me out of an airplane. If you could get me out then, and you probably had to take me out the door kicking and screaming. Um, but it would be a cool experience. So I would I would entertain the idea of doing a tandem jump strapped to somebody over France. But that would be the only time I ever would jump out of an airplane my entire life. Uh, Dustin, got to run. Thanks for the live stream. Hopefully we can link up uh, for a day in Pittsburgh next month. And if you ever come to Whistles Creek, let me know. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, um, hopefully I can make it to Pittsburgh next month. So here's what's coming up on the channel, guys. Um, so I've got a lot of traveling to do both for the channel and, and for not on the channel as well. Uh, but we are getting set next month to head off to upstate New York 
where we will be exploring French and Indian War and Revolutionary War sites in upstate New York. It is going to be an awesome ride. I can't take the, uh, wait to take you guys along with me. We'll be doing some live streams from there, of course. And I hope it's not snowing like the Dickens. But if it is, it is what it is. Um, but we're going to be exploring some cool fortifications and some other sites. So I, I, I'm really excited about that because I've never been in that part of the country at all. Um, it's my first time there myself. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll be right on the Canadian border, which is going to be cool, too, because maybe I'll be able to actually get some Tim Hortons again, which is awesome. Um, I have been to upstate New York. I just haven't been to this part of upstate New York. Um, so, And I'm looking forward to bringing that content to you guys and getting some Tim Hortons coffee. Uh, there's a place in Oklahoma that you can stay in World War II barracks and jump out of a DC-3. It can jump in your World War II gear. Um, yeah, that's ADT, Airborne Demonstration Team, week-long training five jumps. I think it's $1,400. That's not actually a bad price. Um, I'm not doing it, though. I'm not jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> um, it would be a cool experience. <coughs> Here's some money to cover shipping those items up to me and keep up the good content. Thank you. Uh, you didn't have to do that, man. Uh, but I do appreciate it. I will get that up to you. I've got a, a T-shirt with your name on it. And some other items so it's going to be neat i've just got to get to the post office and get through this sickness uh today is the first day i haven't felt like absolute poop in four days um so yeah i'm gonna take a day recover from this stuff grab a breath or two kind of relax maybe get a little bit of editing done tonight uh on the next episode for history saver and then uh hopefully we'll get to the post office sometime this week and get that out to you uh, we just came through Albany, New York last night on the way home from Gettysburg. I won't be in Albany. I'll be close to Albany. I'll be up in the Utica, uh, Syracuse area of New York. Um, so I probably just gave away a lot right there. Because if you guys look at them out, you'll tell where I'm going to be in New York. And you can tell what's there that I'm probably going to be visiting while I'm in New York. And if you see me, come say hello, please. And if you're in that area and want to join me for the day, let me know. Shoot me a message. Uh, Willie's MB, hello there. What's up, buddy? Um, all the way from Alaska joining us this morning. How cold is it in Alaska? Yeah, it's pretty cold in Alaska. I, I would love to be in Alaska right now. It's actually not bad here. Um, the 120 degree weather has gone away here. I come back home to some nice weather. It's 57 this morning and only 80 degrees today. Pretty cool. Uh, well, we might be able to meet up then. All right, Paul. Well, um, we'll 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 coordinate that off of uh, through text here, and maybe we can meet up while I'm up there at some point. So, I uh, will be in the Syracuse area of New York is where we will be, Utica area, and Verona, New York. I'm down south right now. Like in my neck of the woods, Willies. Let's see. I gotta figure out where you are, buddy. Um. But because um, if you're down south right now, where I'm thinking that I think you're talking about, we may have to get up. Um, we haven't got up since your last trip here. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll we've got some amazing content coming from there, guys. Don't forget to check out Project Pass. Um, there's there's a lot of cool stuff coming, and and you got Antietam coming. You've got some American Revolutionary War stuff coming. Um, you've got, let's see, what else is on the, on the bench here? Uh, Harper's Ferry is coming at some point and yeah, so we're, we're catching up. Oh, and it's okay. All right, Willie's, um, I may have to give you a text here in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got some awesome content coming and it's going to be a ride. We've got some other stuff coming too. some, uh, New stuff for the channel coming as well. Some World War II stuff coming too. I, I've been wanting to do some more World War II reenacting theme stuff for you guys that like that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll we'll get some more of that up sooner or later. Uh, I'm just trying to kind of figure out what to do. Uh, Readout Re uh, Productions. Hell, what's up, buddy? Um, if you guys haven't checked out Readout Productions, you need to go do that. It's another one of my favorite channels to watch. Um, he does some awesome stuff. So. Uh, Go check him out as well. But there is a there's a lot coming up, and we've got a lot on the on the agenda here. And man, it's just nice to slow down 
and then I slow down, actually get home, and I'm sick. It sucks. It sucks big time, and I, I still feel like poop now. I don't feel like absolute poop. I'm kind of putting up a front right now because um, I really don't feel that great. But, you know, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to uh, kick back today, try to beat this crud, uh, try to do some stuff, you know, around the house. And then uh, I've got some packages to mail out uh, to a couple of different people. Um, so I'm hopefully going to be able to do that sometime this week or first part of next week. Um and I'm just trying to get stuff caught up from being gone. And, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do. And then being sick on top of it, man, it's been no fun. I'm, I'm trying to play catch up and being sick on top of it with a sinus infection. It's not the greatest thing in the world. So, because you really don't feel like doing anything. And trying to catch up on different things. And, yeah, you know how that goes. It's just life Life and sickness tends to hit you at the worst possible time, usually. Um, so, to the best thing you can do is just take a breath, try to let it ride its course out. And then once it rides its course out, hit the ground running a hundred miles an hour. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to take the day easy and get some stuff done around the house so that I need to catch up on doing um, nothing too physical though, uh, because I, I don't really feel the greatest in the world. And then may catch up on some reading and editing. It's kind of kicked back this afternoon. And then, uh, then once this passes, try to get all these packages I need to get mailed out, mailed out at the post office. For me, it's just not a hop, skip, a jump to the post office. I actually have to go, you know, I live out in the country, man. So I've got to, uh, I've got to get to the post office is the problem. Um, so it's just not a hot skip, a jump down the street. Um, let's see. I have five reenactments coming up in the next few weeks. Holy crud, dude, that's a lot. Uh, we just had... We just lost a World War One fighter that crashed this past Saturday. Really, I hadn't heard about that. Huh. I, I might have to look that up. So, yeah, that's the plan for today is just to go kind of kick back a little bit, get some things done around the house, try to beat the sinus infection so that way I can get everything else done I need to get done, and then uh, maybe do some editing and stuff too, try to catch up a little bit, and then uh, get some packages out later on this week or beginning of next week and oh i don't know what that is and then uh there we go five reenactments coming up in the next few months holy bananas dude that's a lot that is a lot um i would be dead rest i don't know what rest is i only know how to grind that has been me too but this has got me down man this has got me down i'll tell you what yesterday and the day before oh man I felt horrible. Today, I feel a little bit better. I still feel like poop, and I really don't feel like doing much, but, I mean, I push myself to do what I can and without making myself sicker, just trying to give myself some time to get over this stuff and and take vitamins or vitamins. Isn't it, isn't it funny how, like, overseas they say vitamins instead of vitamins? I don't know. What's the proper pronunciation? It makes you wonder that, like, is it supposed to be pronounced vitamins or is it supposed to be pronounced vitamins? That's the kind of crap that goes through my head sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, but anyway, guys, we're going to get off here. I'm going to uh, continue on with the day, and I hope you can do as well. I hope you enjoy the content that's come. Thank you all so much for the support. And, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot coming, a lot coming. So we will see you on the next one. I will try to do more live streams um, here soon. Um, tr I'm trying to do one a week, and that's what I've been trying to do. Sometimes I make it, sometimes I don't, according to where I am and what I'm doing. Um, so traveling, it, it's been kind of hard to do, and then at times it's been easy to do. But we'll try to do what we can. So anyway, guys, I'm going to jump off here. We're going to get to the grindstone. I'm going to go and try to beat this sickness, and we're going to continue with the day. Enjoy your day. Thank you for joining me, and it's been a lot of fun being able to have a conversation with you guys. Just kick back, relax, review some of this content that's out there, and it, it's been an absolute blast. So we'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep observing history. As always, stay safe, and let's go have some fun.